Let's do a little more with this epsilon delta definition of a limit. Let's do some actual examples where we, where we find a delta whenever an epsilon is provided. Okay, so, so let's see. Um, finding finding a delta given an epsilon. Okay, finding a delta given an epsilon. Of course, I'm assuming you know the epsilon delta definition of a limit. So, so let's do an example here. Let's say we have uh, this graph, something that looks like this. Maybe our function um, g of x, maybe our function g of x has this sort of behavior. Okay, it looks something like that. And let's say that it, at this point here, let's say that this is 7, an x value of 7, and the corresponding y value, let's say, is 8. Okay? And then we're going to trace out some, some values here on this graph. Um, let's say that up here we have 8.5 and down here we have 7.5 and when we trace those back to the x-axis when we trace those back to the x-axis let's say that this is 6 and let's say that this is 9.5 Okay? Simple enough. And in fact, um, what we want to do is find, so let's, let's find delta so that if the absolute value of x minus 7 is less than that delta, the absolute value of g of x minus 8 is less than 0.5. So that's what we want to do. Find a delta so that if the distance between x and 7, all x values, between, all x values within delta of 7 make all y values within 0.5 of 8. Okay? So, so let's start getting a handle on what's happening here, what the question is. We need to ensure that all x values that are delta away from 7, so here's 7, all x values that are delta away from 7 will have y values that are within 0.5 of 8. In other, in other words, the y values have to live between 7.5 and 8.5. Okay? So for example, if I were to choose, um, let me just give an example. Let's try... Let's try a delta value of 2, right? A delta value of 2. If I chose delta to be 2, then all of the x values that are within two, a radius of 2 from 7, so it would have to go out here to 9 and down here to 5, right? Every x value in here, between 5 and 9, because those are within 2 of 7, every x value in here would have to have their y value between 7.5 and 8.5. I hope you can see that that fails. Look at the x value of 5. Its y value is right here. It's outside of this 0.5 radius around 8. That's not going to work. So what do we have to do to work? Maybe you've got some ideas for yourself. If you do, pause the video and flesh those out and see if you get it right. So delta equals 2 does not work. Let's try um, delta equals 0.5, right? Let's make it small. So if delta is 0.5, we're going down to 6.5 and up to 7.5. Hopefully you can already see that if we trace back all of those y values, since these two x values are within these red values here, the y values for the purple ones will also be within 
the 7.5 to 8.5 range. So delta equals 0.5 does work. You can see that, right? But what I'd like to do is find the biggest delta possible. So how would we do that, the biggest delta? Let me erase this. If I want the biggest delta, well, I need to choose the biggest radius I can around 7. So the question is, do I go all the way over to 9.5 or do I just go over to 6? Well, we already saw that delta equals 2 does not work. So delta equals 2.5 would not work either because that would give us a, an x value of 9.5 over here. That's fine. But if I go 2.5 the other direction, I'm going past this 6. So what you should start to see is this, the delta you want to choose should be the smaller of these two distances. So we're gonna choose delta to equal one because that's how far this distance is here. We don't want delta to be too big. So if I choose delta to equal one, sorry, delta, not D, delta to equal one, then I'm looking at all x values between six and eight and if I trace all of, those, all of those x values back up here to their y values, well, 6 traces back to 7.5, that's good. And 8 traces back to something less than 8.5, that's good. And you can see what happens if you expand this delta radius further. You're going to go too far to the past 6, which is going to correspond to y values that are below 7.5 in this particular example. So the biggest delta that you could choose here the biggest delta is 1 in this particular case, okay? Anything smaller than 1 would also work. All right, so that's a great example to sort of get you more comfortable with epsilon delta. Let's try another example. So let's try to find delta so that if the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than that delta, the absolute value of f of x, uh, sorry, not f of x, x cubed minus 8 is less than epsilon. And let's pick a particular epsilon. Let's say that epsilon, again, is 0.5, okay? Just because I'm drawing this on a board, uh, bigger numbers are gonna be easier for me to draw, and they're still not gonna be terribly precise. So what do we have here? This time I'm not giving you a diagram. We're gonna have to come up with that ourselves. No images to accompany this. So we're looking at x getting close to two, and we're looking at f of x, let's call this f of x, so f of x, our function is x cubed, and x cubed, or f of x, is getting close to 8, all right? In fact, we're getting to within 0.5 of 8. So the diagram looks like the x cubed function, so we need to graph the x cubed function. And let's say this is 2, and let's say this is 8, again, not to scale, okay? But we know the x cubed function goes through 0, 0, comes up here, and goes through this point, and gets steeper and steeper and steeper, right? Something like that. Keeps going. I'm not worried about anything else except near the x value of 2. So now let's see if we can figure out the other parts of the picture. We know that we want our y values, x cubed values, to be within 0.5 of 8. So I want them to be within 8.5 and 7.5, okay? The way to make that happen is to trace those y values back to their corresponding x values. So 7.5 is gonna land down here below two, and 8.5, of course, is going to land down here above two. So if, if we knew these two distances, then the biggest delta that I would choose would be the smaller of those two distances, right? So what we need to do 
is we need to figure out these two x values. Because if I know those, I could figure out how far they are from 2, and I could use that to pick my delta. All right, so how do we do that? Now, this function is f of x equals x cubed. So how do I take y values for the x cubed function and trace them back to their x values? Well, maybe you have some ideas. I hope so. This is the y equals x cubed function. This tells us how to calculate y. You cube the x values. How do you calculate the x values? Well, you can, you can solve this for x. Take the cube root of both sides, and you can see that x would be the cube root of y. So in other words, this x value, this first one, would be the cube root of 7.5. So this is the cube root of 7.5. And then this guy is the cube root of 8.5. How do we use that to find our delta? Well, let's, let's get out the calculator and let's see what the cube root of 7.5 is. Let's see here. It looks like it's about 1.95743382.1. So that's a cube root of 7.5. Let's do the same thing and find the cube root of 8.5. And that appears to be about 2.04082789. So what I want to do now, and we know this from the last example, is I want to know these two distances from 2. Well, this distance is clearly 0 0.04, etc. So this, if, if I chose this side, delta would be 0 0.04082755.1. If this distance is what I want, I'd have to do 2 minus this. So let's go back and do... 2 minus that, which appears to be 0 0.04256617.9. That would be my choice of delta. We already know from the previous example I have to pick the smaller of the two values. Right? They're both pushing the limits. Which one's going to work? One's going to be too big, the other one's going to work just fine. So between the two, it appears that this guy is smaller. So we don't want to pick this. Let's choose that to be our delta value. Understand that this is the biggest delta, approximately, by the way, because the, the cube root of 8.5 is irrational. We can't write down all the digits. So this is about the biggest delta we could choose, and of course, anything smaller would work as well. Okay? So this is a really great example now where you have to fill in the missing pieces to find, to find the delta value and recognize the function, the epsilon and the delta.